Welcome guys to Metalidium Pages, it's a great pleasure to talk with you about Suffocation, this last album, and obviously more things relating to the to the metal world in general. So we'll start by asking, how has the band, how has the band been during the last, well, during the last six years? Because your previous album of Dark Light was released in, in 2017, now we have a new album, Hymns from the um, Apocryphies, Apocryphied. So how has yeah, it been yeah. going during the last six years? Well, um, so when when Eric and I joined the band, uh, uh, All the Dark Light was pretty much already written. So it was really more about us uh, learning the album and tracking the album. Derek, Derek pretty much did all the writing for that. And, uh, and as you know, we have the live album, which, you know, we were there for that. And uh, now we got this album, and uh, it was finally uh, time for me and Eric to get involved and get our own style in it. And uh, we've just been touring a lot since then. That's why, you know, it takes a while to write the albums because we tour a lot. So it's like, it's hard to get everybody to do everything. We're always on the road. So we're glad that's finally out, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, nice. Oh, talking about now you enter in, in the band in 2016 because both are entering, the, both and we're entering in 2016. That's amazing. So, so how do you see before you enter the vocation, the situation in the band as a outside as as outsiders of the band? Well, um, for me, I was like always a fan before a member. Like, uh, grew up listening to suffocation. I was uh growing up was more into like the metalcore, deathcore bands. And uh, Suffocation is like probably the main band that made me want to play death metal. And uh, Eric actually, you tell him like I didn't, I didn't really know them, but I was I found out quick. Yeah. <laughs> so Derek, so Eric, uh, Eric was mainly like you know he knew the band but wasn't really listening to it, which actually what we liked because we were looking for a drummer after Kevin Talley, and uh, we actually uh, talked to. Uh, Alex from the Spies Icon, we were asking him if he would play for us. And uh, he said, you know, I, I'm not really the guy, but I know this kid, Eric Marotti, that's probably a perfect fit for you guys. And then we started talking with Eric, and he's like, I don't really know the band that well, but, you know, I've heard you guys. And uh, he sent us a couple of videos, and we brought him out, and uh, here we are. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, nice, nice. Well, you mentioned that, you mentioned a few, as you said, because I got Eric that is. Well, they, that the one that you entered to the band in 2016, or Chris, sorry, you, you entered to the band and you won. Uh, yeah. the, the six years album well, the, the, yeah. of Purpose and Life was composed, right. all, everything by Terrence Hobbs at that time. But now, uh, how was the composition process for this new album? How was it? Because I, we know that the we know that the first the, the previous album was composed just over by Terrence Hobbs. But now, how is the composition process? Do you interchange guitar parts with him, or, or perhaps? Is, is it still he, well, he composed everything in the band? Who knows? How was the composition process of this new album? So basically, um, it's it kind of like, you know, this was, this was like a little bit of a weird process because, you know, the transition of, for the past few years, or like, you know, the past bunch of years, like it was mainly uh, Terrence and Derek writing all this stuff. And, uh, you know, so this time around, it was more like, I would offer, you know, we would offer parts, and then be like, oh, do this, do this, do this, and then it ended up being that um, we would just do full songs, where I'd be like, all right, here's a song, do you like it? What do you want to change? What do you not want to change? And then Hobbs was just like, he's like, all right, you gave a whole song, and it's good, just go to the next song. So it was cool. Hobbs gave us the freedom to like do what we wanted to do, and instead of like being like, all right, the band has to be this way. He's like, all right, well, I want the band to like have your guys' flavor on it. So he gave us the freedom to be able to write what we thought would sound like vacation. So it's kind of like, you know, um, I would sit at home, we'd be on FaceTime, or I'd be on FaceTime with Ricky. And we all live in like, he lives in Canada sometimes, and back and forth from Canada and New York. And then our singer lives in California. So we'd be on FaceTime, like trying to discuss the riffs. And, you know, it was kind of like, you know, weird not having the band all there at all times. But so it was more like, uh, you know, so one of us would create something and then show it to the other guys and be like, all right, you like it? What do you want? Do you want to change this? Do want to change this? So it was not necessarily the normal, like, everybody sitting in the room writing. We kind of did it a little different this time. But in the end, it ended up working out, you know. Mm, okay. Okay, well, 
Other than that, other than that, I mentioned this is one of the big that the big 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 change exists in this, this new album. It is that the the the, the, the complete full out vocals was one was recorded by Ricky Myers at this time. Well, compared to the previous album that was did by one of the greatest vocalists in in the death metal world, that is Frank Mullen. Uh, every know that every, every every people that loves death metal know, knows him. So so how does the how does the beat for you as as all outsiders? Well, you expect obviously to to hear Frank Mullen live normally, but when yeah. you hear the vocation with Rick Ricky Myers, even Ricky Myers is, is is still playing since well, is playing with you since 2019. So now right. we have we saw Ricky Myers live, but for you, how many different changes in the live pre presentations to the uh, CD presentation or to the recording process? Because it's very different, it's not the same. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So basically, like uh, you know. When Ricky, you know, like when Ricky started with us, you know, it was more like you know he's trying to fill Frank's shoes. So you know, which is you know, big shoes to fill. But uh, you know, Ricky's now we believe that like Ricky's found himself. You know, it's, it's less about being Frank. We're trying to not be like you know, get the same vein, the same things that Frank would do, but still Ricky be Ricky. You know, so it's cool if you notice on this album, there's a lot of cool, like, Ricky doing different tones and there's layers of vocals. And uh, he's just really trying to find himself. So now it's, like, a proud moment also for Ricky that he's able to be himself instead of being, like, looked at, like, the guy that's filling you Frank. You know? So now he's... <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hello, Dick, <sir. laughs> Okay. <laughs> No, talking about now, especially for the drummers, drum, drum, drum areas, now you, your area, Eric. So, and in the nineties, Mike Smith was a, a just successful influence for a lot of death metal drummers in the world. Even, even I know, I remember that the here suffocation in the first album and the, until the new album with first within, and he he did a lot of amazing things in that album. So, but it's normally that the band is still growing with new forms, with new eras, and more things related to this. But for you. Is it still possible to grow up with new methods and techniques that suffocation created over the time with your methods? Set your head in new style suffocation. Is that is that is that what you mean? Yes, like, I don't understand. Head? Yes, is it possible to You're go beyond right? your the sound the, the suffocation oh, okay. sound with your methods and techniques? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I get to add some things here and there to different old parts, and the guys are okay with it. Because, you know, back in the day, they were figuring out techniques and they would go for something. And I mean, I could see like what they wanted to do and try and do it with a more polished, new type of sound. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's like uh, the other guys were kind of like, you know, Mike Smith and all them, like they were like creating the sound mm -hmm. of death metal. Yes. You know, so like at that time in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, like they were kind of making death metal, you know? So it was like, now that it's so many years later, it's like yeah. Eric is putting on like the modern touches that like weren't even invented yet then. So it's cool that he's putting the new polished shit, a lot of, a lot of the double strokes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, stuff like that. Get that fashion in there, like, you know, the all the modern touches, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So now, well, uh, for me, it's, it's, for me it's more easily to understand the difference between the between the elves because I'm, I am outsiders. I'm just a listener for the music. But you, as you are not uh, insiders of the band, so how for you, how many differences in, in fine in this album compared to the previous one? How many what? Difference in what? In difference, style or? difference in general. Well, really, I feel like, uh, like I said, uh, Terrence and Derek wrote the last album of The Dark Light. So, you know, it was like, for at least like me and Eric and Ricky, it was kind of like us trying to figure out, like, at least for me, like while I was writing the album, I was listening to a lot of the older suffocation albums. And I was like, how do we make, how do we make a more modern version of the old school suffocation? You know, still bringing those elements that are from the old school to the modern times with that little touch on it, you know? So I feel like that's really the main big difference is trying to make it more modern. Like, but still be old school and have the classic elements that everyone's looking for out of something. Okay. Well, I, as, as you as you can see now, we are living in a world that prefers to hear singles. And with this aspect, a lot of people select just singles better, this song single better, 
So, and, and I think the, the album does not fit very well now with the new generation, especially especially for the digital platforms now. So for you, yeah. uh, which single or singles resume, but that's difficult, resume all textures and layers that this album has in one or two songs? Um. Well, I feel like the first thing we put out, um, Seraph and the Slavic, like that's like a very like good sum up. Like there were some songs on the album that, that are just, I wrote all the riffs. There's some songs that transfer all the riffs. And then there's some songs we did together. And Slave Riff was a song that all of us did together. So I feel like that was kind of like, that's why we put that one out first, because we're like, that kind of like sums up what we're trying to do and gave everyone like a little like taste of like, this is what we are trying to project. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially like, uh, especially with the help of uh, the music video that we had done by Tom Flynn. You know, like, uh, it was the first time Suffocation ever did, like, a CGI type of, like, green screen video. And, uh, you know, just trying to, like, bring the modern elements into the old school band, you know? So, uh, talking about for the promotion of this new album, what kind of plans do you have one, for this new album? And you are now embarking on, well, you are on tour now, and perhaps you will embark on more tours in Europe next year, or perhaps you will return to Latin America next year, who knows? Yeah, um, we're talking about doing that stuff. Everything's in the talk. There's nothing locked in right now. We have like the next two or three months like locked in, like the tours, and uh, it's kind of just trying to like hit every part of the world that we can with this new album. You know, so we're doing Europe in January, February with Saint Sugarbug, Enterprise Earth, and Organizzi, and uh, we'll be doing uh, some other crazy places coming up after that, which you'll hear about. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're just trying to get as many places that we can with the new album and, like, spread the word, you know. Mm. Okay. So, as I mentioned, I'm talking about other kind of things into, into the extreme metal, metal in world in general. Well, I remember when I hear for the first time Suffocation at the end of the 80s or beginnings of 90s, I remember very well when they appear all that the death metal is in black. Death metal appears with the sound, and now a lot of things change happen and a lot of reviewers Change the concept of the brutal death metal. As you can see now, a lot of people think that suffocation is like the brutal technical death metal. I don't know why, because obviously the brutal death metal is so technical in the Skinner rims. It's not necessary to put technical over the brutal technical death metal since the since the beginning. So, what is your opinion about now this concept that it has in the especially for the viewers and listeners that they say that it, suffocation or a lot patterns more a lot and a lot bands more has brutal technical from technical i don't know hyper technical brutal i don't know a lot of, a lot of labels to put a uh in, in a band so what's your opinion about yeah. this aspect do you think that the brutal brutal death metal is is con is considered like technical death metal now or just brutal death metal like this is um at least for us like i really like to like subgenre it like that you know we just kind of just look at it like that metal but, you know, like, with every album, there's their differences, you know, like, um, of the dark light was a little more technical. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like, of the dark light was a little more on the technical side. And, uh, I think with this album, we tried to go a little more towards the brutal side. You know, it's like, everybody knows that we can do this crazy shit, or, like, that the band does that crazy shit, you know, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's still music. And, uh, you know, the brutal stuff is the more mm -hmm. easy stuff to catch on to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, we tried to be a little more brutal on this album. And so you asked, how do we feel about it? That, yes. I think that was a question. Oh, I mean, how, 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 so how, how we, oh, what are, what kind of, I, what kind of point of view do you have for oh, these new labels that the reviewers and listeners put oh, for a lot of time? Very, right. for me, well, very crazy. Like, yeah, that's what, well, that's, I guess that's how we feel. It's more just like, we don't like the subgenre. You know, it's kind of just like, death metal is death metal, and every band has different albums and different riffs and different songs, and, you know, maybe there's, you know, like, like okay, some of the songs on this album, like, maybe this song is a little bit more technical, and then this song is a little bit more brutal. Mm -hmm. So does that make us technical, or does that make us brutal? No, just we're just playing death metal. So it's just like, you know, it's not that we're brutal death metal, we're not technical death metal, we're not technical brutal death metal. A lot of the um, a lot of the new younger people who work for press do they kind of just jump on being fat, so they might see one press 
label, make one statement, and just be like, oh, oh bam, and then change a couple words to get it out there quick. So I think that might be why, like, the reason why you see more of that exact same labeling of a band coming about amongst these press things, because they just don't really put that thought into it as much anymore. They just want to get it up fast, because they know if they're fast, they're like, oh, we got it up fourth, and they put it up third. We, have, we did a review in only two days. You know, it's really just a big old, big old petri dish of the exact same disease. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, really not important to us, the people who write the music. It's more for the them. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, uh, as you can see, we are in years and uh, there are no more bands that fill the stadiums and everything is personalized by taste and colors. And now, thanks to the TikTok trends, Facebook trends, etc. trends that exist, sometimes it's silly and sometimes very implausible, sometimes very annoying, sometimes, especially for me. Uh, where, in this, with, with this kind of aspects, well, where do you think are enters in this generation that already consumes little little or nothing physical material and only takes music as accompaniment to the daily life. So mean, I mean, so watch the car, going to the bed, going to the doctor, yeah, and the music now for the new generation is taking as a background of their lives. It's not like the eighties or nineties when you take a lot of attention in the record. I remember when I hear for the first time, the first album from Autopsy and remember to hear, hear the 40 times at that time, but now it's very different. Now the people just hear the music as a background of their lives or in their lives. Yeah, I definitely think that, uh, like you said, like back in the day, everyone was focusing more on the little details. And now everyone looks at it like a whole. And it's like, uh, you know, a lot of times it's like they just want something they can catch on to. And like the technical stuff, I just feel like sometimes people get lost. And uh, yeah. I feel like there was more effort putting into the listening from people back in the day and uh i mean not that i was really there for that but like it just seems like back in the day when they were just doing a lot of more crazy shit going for it and like people were appreciated it more and now everyone just wants to hear a breakdown you know like so it's like trying to like get the best of both worlds with that but uh you know i feel like uh as far as like the fans listening to it goes like a little bit more like simplified you know what i mean mm, okay oh. okay yeah. Okay, and with this aspect, as you can see now, we are living in a world that the, a lot of bands are releasing albums, singles, EPs, new forms of music because Catholic Capitation is very different from the from from more of the Angel Autopsy, etc. Bands from the right, right. it's very different it's right now. So, so what is your point of view about now the extreme metal world? I think that the death metal world more dominated the, the heavy metal now. Because as you can see, the heavy metal is stagnated with ancient rhymes. Uh, thrash metal is, is stagnated the same too with old bands, no evolution, no more evolutions with the 80 bands. But the dead metal is the only style that is still growing with avant-garde, experimental, progressive. Uh, I don't know, a lot of mixtures into there. Right. Um, I'm kind of confused with the question. But, yes, uh, what, what, what is your point of what is your point of view uh, of your point of view about the death metal is still growing with different kind of mixtures in the world? Yeah, well, I mean, like as far as the writing process goes, you know, it's like all I feel like every death metal band kind of just doing like you know, like a little bit more of a modern touch on what they used to do. But as far as like touring goes, I I like that I like that death metal bands are getting together with these like more death core bands or like mixing genres of tours, like, I feel like that's actually good for the industry to uh, mix these bands up so that the fans can hear, like, other things that they wouldn't probably listen to that are, like, they're kind of, like, everything's kind of getting together in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's, what's the tour? It's, like, State Born Autopsy with Exodus. Like, you know, like that's, that's a mix that you wouldn't think about 10 years ago. So, oh, it's yeah. cool that all these bands finally lining up and you're mixing like you know we're all still playing extreme music but it's cool that you're getting those two realms together now you know yes yes that that is true and um, but now that everything is very personalized and there are more strange technical progressive things avant-garde in many bands of the in the, on the planet especially in stream music so what do you think will happen to the next generation when listening to the music that is very <laughs> personal <laughs> No, I'm sorry, what is that? I uh, what? 
I'm just joking. What do you say to Kay? What's the future yeah. going to be? Also, so, what do you think about now? The, the, the extreme music is very personalized with taste and colors. It's not like the 80s and 90s when you hear a song in the radio and this song repeatedly more times and was a hit at that time. Now it's very different. Now we have a lot, a ton of bands with different styles, with different techniques, with different albums, etc. And people yeah. and people are very gathered for for each for each uh, for each styles. So you you have fans for technical death metal, have for progressive, for trash, for trash, for heavy, etc. etc. You just don't have more massive bands now. Right. It's um. I feel like it's like a mix of like mix. I'm oh, sorry. I'm not saying there was no question there. I feel like it's a mix of more like, like you said, like, you know, like there's people that separate themselves, but I feel like that's like almost more of like a like be cool thing instead of like what they actually think. So that's why, that's why I like at least that they're mixing up genres that like, you know, like now it's like if you're an exit, like I said, just using that Exodus tip for an autopsy tour, you know, it's like maybe those two types of fans would not listen to the other one. But now it's like you're at the show and now it's like you're kind of like being put in that situation to be open minded to listen to both. Instead of like, oh, okay, I only want to listen to fit for an autopsy band like that, and I don't care about it. But it's like, actually, well, maybe if you didn't put the time in, with the exodus, then you wouldn't know. And now you start the show, and you're like, all right, now I like it. So the exodus, yeah. So you know, it's just like I like that. I like that the touring that's going on is like forcing, almost forcing people to be more open-minded because there are a lot of people that are like, I like this, and that's it. You know, so it's, it's cool to be able to like actually kind of like force people to be more way about it. Okay. Uh, one of the last question, uh, how was your last tour in Mexico? Because you did a tour a few months in October. Viva Mexico! <laughs> Jonas. We love Jonas. Jonas. <laughs> but, um, yeah, every time we go to Mexico, it's amazing. Uh, we go Victor. Out, we go out with, uh, yeah, Victor. Go, go. Go, go. And, um, he always treats as well. And the Mexican people are, like, very enthusiastic. And, uh, it's always a pleasure every time we go there. Everybody's fucking psycho. Mm, okay, and your last tour here in Latin America, which country for you was the most enthusiastic for you? In Latin America in general. Well, the enthusiastic... Oh, yeah. I would, say, I would say that uh, the Mexican people and the Latin American people are definitely probably the most enthusiastic. Yeah. You would not believe how much black... Diego. Yeah. You would not believe how much <laughs> black hair is on the ground when we're going to show. <laughs> Like, there's just like, hair and whatever. Like, these motherfuckers are just ripping each other out. I'm going to jump off the stage and ripping around. And, like, they're crazy as fuck. Santiago, Local Chile. motherfuckers. Exactly. Well, yeah. Like, we love it. Though. Like, they're, they're very enthusiastic. And we're, like, every time we have to go there, it's always a great time. Well, okay. Thanks for this. Uh, well, guys, the sad times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. I don't know. I I sold three times six locations with the last one. So love love their band since the one well, since the eight, since the beginning of nineties. And and perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans and obviously Metalian followers. Um, I guess we just want to say thank you for being around. Thank you for being fucking very enthusiastic. We hope that everyone's like enjoying the music and. We understand that it's not the same band that's always been, but Terrence Hobbs is a big part of death metal, and we're just here to help him continue the name suffocation because it's a great band. Like I said, we're a band before members, and we just want to keep the band going. And it's not about trying to change the band or anything. Like we just want to keep the band going for as long as possible. And we appreciate that everyone still comes out to the streets. 